Welcome back to another episode of Historic Headstones in Norfolk. We are here at Cedar Grove Cemetery. We are right along Princess Anne Road, so it's going to be kind of loud. We're talking about Thomas Harry, such a historic figure, we need to talk about him. So unfortunately, if we get loud traffic through this video, I will try to talk my loudest. Thomas Hare here was a native of Norfolk. He died March 9, 1939, as you can see he was born in 1883. He started his career as a baking powder salesman and became the first commercially sponsored radio singer in North America. He holds that title. He also made one movie, playing stock songs, and sang in summer operas at one time, was understudy to Al Jolson, who was a Russian-born American singer, comedian, actor, and at peak of his career, he was dubbed the world's greatest entertainer. Wait for the cars to go by. <laughs> On a Broadway musical comedy stage in 1921, he sang over at WJZ in Newark, New Jersey. Pioneer Studios was the first radio entertainer to be employed for advertising purposes. He is the first person to be employed for advertising purposes. So you know, back in the day, they had the uh, commercials where people were singing and doing all kinds of stuff. He was the first one to do that. Making him a pioneer in modern radio. That's who this gentleman is. He's a very important character. He was born in Norfolk in 1883 and attended St. Mary's Academy. He sang in church choirs here and spent his time being a parlor entertainer. His father, Thomas Hare, moved to Baltimore as a general manager of the Seagull Specialty Company. When only 18 years of age, Ernie became a resident of Baltimore, though he traveled from there as a salesman of baking powder for his father. Ernie became a popular singer in Baltimore. He sang in the Baltimore Ca uh, Cathedral Choir, one of the most well-known choirs in Baltimore. Later, he studied at Peabody Co Concert uh, of Music. Sorry, can't speak today. He would go to, uh, to shows and come home singing and whistling the tunes. He would sit down at the piano and play every note and sing every word just as he heard them, even though it was the first time he had listened to the song. Uh, he had a remarkable memory and a wonderful talent. It was his job as a baking powder salesman that started Ernest on the road to fame as an entertainer. Frequently he would stay at hotels where troops were stopping. He would introduce himself to them and have fun singing to them for an hour. They encouraged, they encouraged him to go on the stage, and soon he left the job as a salesman for more glamorous one appearing before the bright lights on the stage. Early in his career, Hare was uh, an understudy for Al Johnson, a musical comedy, while Jolson was recovering from illness in Florida. One of the finest tributes ever paid to him as an entertainer came from the man Dale, the famous Broadway critic in the early years of Broadway. A friend was sitting beside Dale at a theater, and the critic remarked to him, Jolson seemed to be in top form that night. Why, that's Ernest Hare. The understudy and friend replied, Dale was taken by surprise. If all understudies were that good, there wouldn't be any need for overstudies, the critic amused. He was that good. He met Billy Jones in 1919. Billy was a tenure and who was popular during the 1920s and 30s. They together began their radio career on October 18, 1921 on uh, WJC in Newark, New Jersey. Sponsored by Happiness Candy. Okay, I really want to know why that ca candy is really happy. They were heard as the Happiness uh, Boys beginning on August 22nd, 1923 on New York's WEAF moving to NBC for a run from 1926 to 1929. You heard that right. NBC was a radio company before it was a TV company. Let that bus pass. Sorry, it's really busy along this road. All right, as a happy disc, boys, they sang popular tunes, mostly light fair and com comic songs with jokes and pattern between numbers. By 1928, they were the by 1928, they were the highest paid singers in radio, earning. $1,250 a week. Some of us don't even make that yet a week, so that's really good for back then. After Hare's death in 1939, Jones continued to perform with Hare's 16-year-old daughter, Marilyn Hare. Jones died November 23rd, 1940. Marilyn Hare went on to a career as an actress in films and television, 
also toured as a vocalist. She died in 1981 and is buried in Forest Lawn Cemetery in Los Angeles, not Norfolk. Her father was a radio pioneer and we are here today to recognize that. This guy, he is a radio pioneer. He's amazing. Everything he did, he could sing. He just did, he's just amazing. And I just wanted to let you guys know. All right, guys, take care and have a great day.